All right, so I just wanted to record this. Uh, this is the latest contraption I've made here. Um, it's basically um, an HO scale, or any scale, I guess, uh, defect detector uh, using an Arduino. And um, kind of just wanted to show it off here because it's, it's a pretty cool concept. And uh, it's almost done. Uh, I, there's a couple other things I have to program into it, uh, but for the most part, it's like 90% there. Um, so I had originally started this on the on the Arduino Uno, um, and about maybe 10 minutes into programming, I realized that this does not nearly have enough memory needed to write this program that I was making. So I upgraded to the Mega instead, um, and that gave me no issues. So. Um, there's a couple things going on here. Basically, the Mega is reading from an SD card. I'm just going to use this paintbrush to point for a second. It's reading from this SD card here. Um, there's two photo, photo cells here. I don't know if you can see that. I could kind of, like, move this out of the way so you could see it. There's one here. There's one here. And those are going to go in the track, uh, the actual track bed. So it's, like, kind of at the very top of your screen. But, you know, one will go here, and then one will go here or something. And then there's the actual infrared beam that's going to go across the tracks, which will be between the two photocells. So it's going to be photocell, infrared beam, photocell. And basically the point of that is so that when one of these um, is covered up, um, then it will know to start reading um, from the infrared beam. And then when both of them are eventually covered, which means that a train would be passing over, um, it will confirm that a train has passed over. And once both of them are uncovered, then it will read the message out depending on what happened. So, um, with that said, um, this is a um, this is another Uno. I'm gonna get a smaller Arduino here. I just had this one laying around. Um, it's not the official Uno. It's like the knockoff one, um, but it's just constantly uh, transmitting an infrared uh, signal here through this infrared LED. And this is the receiver, which is everything on this side is hooked up to this mega this is the only thing just just a simple transmitter I, i'll have to get a smaller board because i don't need an uno for this this is just a very simple thing but um yeah so the transmitter the infrared transmitter is going all the time and the receiver is waiting for the photo cells to be covered over here so uh but first we have this uh, little lcd display here and two buttons so basically um, I've loaded into here a bunch of audio files of defect detectors. One of them's model was a STC Smart Scan NG2, I believe, if I remember that correctly. So I just abbreviated it here STC. And the other was a progress rail. Um, I don't even remember what it was. So you can use the buttons here and you can kind of just like, you know, just use my finger. You can just toggle back and forth. Uh, so I'll use the progress rail just because why not? It says selected progress rail. You can select your railroad, CSX or NS. Uh, I'm gonna use CSX. And then you can enter your mile post, um, which uh, if you don't want something, in, like if you want a two digit mile post dot something or just a one digit dot something, you can just press enter and it'll have a zero. But when the detector reads it out, it'll know not to have those leading zeros. Um, for now, I'm just gonna do like four, zero seven point six because that's the first number that came into my head so it confirms milepost four zero four hundred and seven point six um there's this little on thing well we see here the railroad milepost uh and then what we just entered and it says on here now what i wanted i'll, I'll explain that later on actually but the a stands for axles and there's no train detected so what i'm going to do is put my paintbrush down for pointing um, I have this little, it's just a HO scale truck. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is cover up just one of the photo cells and it's going to say detected. Um, and at this point, the detector would know to start reading um, any uh, differences between the infrared values. So I'm not sure why, but um, I basically had this set up to decode the infrared values and it was coming out to like 4,500 or something. And when there was something in front of it, it came out to zero. 
And I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea why that worked, but it's exactly what I wanted, so I didn't bother to change it. And basically it's reading um, a value when there's a direct line of sight to the beam, and when it's crossed, it reads a zero. So only when a photo cell is covered, it will be counting the amount of times it goes to zero and multiplying that number by two for the axle count. So I'm gonna cover up one of the photo cells. Um, sorry, I'm gonna cover up one of the photo cells. Um, it's gonna say detected, and we're gonna start crossing the beam. It's counting our axles here. And let's just get it up to a nice number. And theoretically, after one or two axles go over, um, both of the photo cells will be covered, which means that it will be a confirmed message. Um, so once both photo cells are uh, uncovered, it will read off the message, right? Let's just get a couple more axles here. Let's do 46. I guess it misread one. 46, there we go. Um, what a time to fail the demonstration. Anyways, um, so now we've uncovered one of the photo cells to simulate the train leaving um, the area and it says ready. And once I uncover both of them, it will read out the message because I've connected it up to a speaker here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. And here we go. CSX equipment defect detector file post 407.6. No defects. No defects. Total axle four six. End of transmission. So as you heard, um, it read off everything a normal defect detector would. Um, it stated no defects, and um, it read off the axle count, the mile post, all that fun stuff. Um, it said on the display track one, uh, that's one of the things that I was gonna just program in here right now to, uh, to have in there, because I have the audio files for it. Um, I just haven't put them in here yet. Um, I was, I'm still working on this, basically. It's a work in progress, but I figured I'd just make a little, uh, something showing how it works. Um, now, the way I've set this up is, um, it's again, still a work in progress. The LCD is gonna be a little out of whack, but you can listen to the audio and it still works. Um, I've set it up so that there's a percentage of, like a, a probability, basically, of how often you want it to detect a defect. So I think I've set it to 25% right now. Um, so, the, every time a message is read out, there is a 25% chance that it will have a defect. And um, the two defects it can detect right now are dragging equipment and a hotbox, which, again, I'm, I, I'll put this in quotation marks, it's detecting a defect. It's really not, it's just a random, uh, randomly generated thing. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to implement rather than just saying no defects all the time. Um, so yeah, it, every... Uh, Every time the detector is reading out a message, there's a 25% chance that there will be a defect. And um, within that, um, there's the dragging equipment, which is pretty straightforward. It'll, it'll generate a random number between one and the axle count um, to have the defect on. So let's say there's you know 16 axles. It'll pick a random number between one and 16 to have a defect on. And it, you know it'll read that out. So hopefully if... Uh, if I demonstrate here, it'll hopefully cooperate. Um, I'm just going to bring it up to like 24. CSX equipment defect detector file post 407.6 hotbox north side axle 1 3 total axle 2 4 end of transmission. So as you heard, um, it did land in that small probability, which I'm glad it did, um, of a hot box. And uh, I believe it was axle 23 out of 24. So that train, you know, would have a defect. They'd have to go through all the fun stuff that a train does when it has a defect. Um, I'm gonna try one more time, just see if we can get the dragging equipment. Hopefully if luck is on my side, we will get all three types of messages today. And it does misread um, uh, axles every now and then. But I'll have to realign this when I actually install it on the layout, so I'm not too worried about any misreads right now, but let's see if we can get a dragging equipment response. CSX equipment defect detector file post 407.6. Dragging equipment near axle 1-3. 
Total axle one eight. End of transmission. Well, I couldn't have planned that any better if uh, if that was in my control. But um, yeah, so you heard uh, there's no defects. There's hot box um, north, south, east, west side axle. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, actually, let me reset this so you can hear the other uh, model. So let's we did progress rail just now. Now we're gonna do uh, let's let's just do the other option. We'll do Norfolk Southern uh, with the STC smart scan let's do three one point and if you go over you can just keep um keep keep advancing up this is basically the, like the advanced button on the left and this is like enter on the right it like toggles let's do three one point six now the other thing i was going to explain is that is this little on uh it says on um so i've come to the realization that i only have a four by eight layout here um i, I mean it's up here i don't want to take the phone off the tripod um, but, you know, basically by the time this thing was done reading, it would be detecting again. So the thing would be constantly going off. So I just have this little toggle switch here. So when it's in this mode of reading, um, it'll still count axles and everything. It'll still operate normally, but when it's switched to off, it just won't read out the message, which is cool because I don't want it to read out the message every single time. That would get pretty annoying. So we'll switch it back to on. Now we're on the STC smart scan. Uh, detector we're also on norfolk southern and you could use csx or norfolk southern on either of these i'm just demonstrating all the options here um so let's get a let's get a good um axle count these audio files for the defects i'm not really happy with right now um so if it does detect a defect and it reads it out it's not going to sound very good so just bear with me but again this is still a work in progress but here we go All right, well, there you have it. Um, that's the other model of detector. Um, I suppose I could really just make as many models as I want as long as I have the audio files for it. Um, but I'm pretty happy with these two just because um, they worked out pretty well. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been testing it with this little truck here. Um, it also works with an actual car. So just for example purposes, um, you can see that uh, it works, so I'll spare you the uh, reading of that message. But uh, yeah, I'm going to look for a way to like basically per make this project permanent because right now, as you can see, it's on a breadboard and uh, I don't really want to keep it that way. I want to, um, you know, solder some connections and see what I can do to make it permanent. And um, yeah, so um, this is just my little... My little project it only took a few days to get up and running um again still working on it i'll probably um cut to another video right now of the uh, final version but this is just uh the breadboard um kind of prototype here and um, i'm gonna work out uh adding um you know to read off track and you'll you could input the track number in the beginning i'm gonna program all that right now actually maybe i should have done that uh, before making this video, but uh, too late. I'm already 15 minutes in, and I don't feel like refilming it. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the HO scale defect detector. Um, this is the temporary prototype version, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll show you the final product right now. Okay, here's the final prototype of the HO scale defect detector. I didn't change much. Um, I redid the wiring, I know it still looks like a mess, but believe it or not, this is actually um, improved from last time. Um, I decided against leaving in the track number just because I didn't really have an audio clip for the STC Smart Scan version, and I just, I didn't feel like implementing it to be honest. Um, I still could in the future, I guess, but I just, I, I left it out for now. So um, I guess just for, why not? I'll I'll do one last readout here. You can see the new, um, the new style of um, detecting reading out uh, of the message. Let me turn up the volume here.
total axle one two end of transmission all right there you go um i think it's pretty straightforward i just i have it on a solderless breadboard right now um but the plan let me take the phone off the tripod actually the plan um is to eventually hardwire it uh to some sort of um you know circuit board so i could have it in here permanently um so i downloaded this program called fritzing uh, it's a very popular uh you know software for people who are making you know schematics and diagrams with arduino and i was able to recreate um you know my you know jumble of wires here up up on the computer so now i should be able to you know pretty easily transfer it over um to some sort of uh permanent uh setup so i was explaining before these photo cells here um i have to put them in the tracks in between here so i'm thinking i'm probably just going to put them right here so it's going to be you know one in the track here then the infrared beam and then another one here somewhere something to that effect and then i can run the wires down and below is where all the uh, fun stuff happens. So I'm gonna put um, this is gonna be, you know, I'll make some sort of wooden housing for it or some sort of shell and I can just drop it down there. And um, the last thing I wanted to do was take this screen and, you know, cut out a square kind of hole here so I could, you know, see the display because it's kind of, you know, it's, it's under this shelf here. I, I, I would want to see the display rather than have it hidden under there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, while I'm here, I might as well give a little tour of the, of the layout. It's just a, it's a little four by eight, um, that I put together. Uh, I got a couple, couple locomotives here. Um, these are all Atlas, um, dash eight, eight dash 40 CWs. If you can't tell, I like, I like dash eight wide cabs, if you couldn't tell. Um, so that's all these four here. This one I just um, I just replaced the board and equipped it with Tsunami 2 sound. So um, now it's much louder and much better. These other ones have, um, I'm, I'm blanking on the, the original decoder name. I'll have to come back to that. Um, this CSX, I believe it's an Atherin GP15T. Um, that was the first one I ever got. Um, and in the back there, that's a Bachman SD40-2. Um, so yeah, um, I plucked the horn off this one because I think they were some sort of like RS3L or some three chime Leslie or something. And because I, on the decoder, I made it uh, a K5. Um, I just bought one of these off of eBay and I plucked off the horn and replaced it. So it's just a stupid little detail, but it's something that I thought was kind of cool. Um, so yeah i mean it sounds great um me, uh... yeah so that came out good um that's a house i just put together uh walther's um I, I guess these are i forgot to put these back those are supposed to be on the ends of all the tracks i guess i'll do that now um and this is kind of the beginning to our scenery here um just, you know, making a cornfield over here, nothing too crazy. Uh, this backdrop I got custom printed from modelrailroadbackdrops.com and I've never, I feel like this is an advertisement, it's not, this, they did not pay me to say this, but this is, that was really the best um, customer service experience, everything that I've ever had with any sort of product. So I would really recommend uh, buying from them and it looks amazing, so. Um, you know, I'm really, really happy with that. So check out that. I'll, I'll probably drop a link in the description if you want to check that out. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll post a update video when I have the um, the detector hardwired in some sorts and when I install it. And other than that, I think that's about it for now. I just have to transfer this to some sort of, um, you know, hardwired connection on the non-solderless breadboard so um yeah be on the lookout for that and until then i guess thank you for watching and i will see you soon